Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching this special 4th of July Ag Forecast brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions, your premier platform for real-time global insights. Well, we in the atmospheric science community got treated to a pretty amazing set of images here from GOES-17. You're looking here kind of across the Pacific Ocean, and right in through this area, right in through here, is the intertropical convergence zone. And we currently have Barbara, a Category 4 strength hurricane going across, but you're probably noticing the dark thing that goes right across this part of the image. That was actually a solar eclipse that happened in the southern hemisphere. It was amazing to be able to see both a category four strength hurricane and a solar eclipse in the same satellite imagery. By the way, while Barbara was churning there, GOES-17 actually got a pretty good clip of it as well. Zoomed here, getting us some very high resolution data here, seeing the swirl right there inside of the eye of Barbara at category four strength, a powerful hurricane. So amazing to see that as well. Meanwhile, over in Italy, we were watching Stromboli. This is a volcano here erupt. Uh, by the way, Stromboli is an island that if you're just looking at the boot of, of Italy, it would be kicking it. That's kind of where its position is in the world. Uh, you can see the eruption here. I'm waiting later in the day on July the 4th to see if we can see some of this ash plume from satellite view. Pretty amazing to see right here, though, this, this uh, eruption. Also, elsewhere around the world, I'm going to take you to Guadalajara. A couple of days ago in Mexico, there was a storm that produced a lot of very small hail plus some flooding rains. And in some places, it all piled up. And you can see here this uh, semi, this tractor trailer driving through uh, the flooded waters full of hail. Amazing to see uh, what's going on there. And bringing you back to the United States, I want to thank Chad Colby for posting this particular picture a couple of days ago. Here you are on Interstate 39 heading north. Uh, we're right here by the uh, where I-39 crosses uh, I-80. And some of the heat we've had has caused the caused the road to buckle, as you can see there in that image, and uh, that's a, that's a, that could be extremely dangerous. Well, what's brought that in has been this flow pattern. In, in general, we've seen a flow pattern that's been doing something like this uh, across the United States, broad ridge that's set up in through this area. And you can see that through parts of the Corn Belt, we finally started to bring in some heat, some heat we haven't seen so far this year, where temperatures were anywhere between three and up to ten degrees warmer than average at times over the last five days. The southeast has also been baking under the seat, some triple digit heat there. But look down here just west of the Mississippi River in parts of eastern Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas and Louisiana, where temperatures have been cooler than average. They've also been cooler than average along the West Coast. And really, the whole western part of, of, of North America has seen some cooler weather. But due to a high or low flow pattern that's been setting up in Alaska, where they are seeing some extreme heat uh, in the next few days compared to average, uh, you can see here that the pattern will be changing. And that's one thing we most definitely have to be talking about. Well, here is that higher or low pattern. So the ridge is there, the trough is beneath it, and the jet stream must split to go around that. It then comes over into this broader trough that's sitting here in the Pacific Northwest and a large ridge that is still pushed across parts of the central part of North America. But this upper level trough that you see right here sitting off of the northeast has been kind of a, a feature that's been around for quite some time. And we're going to talk about it in a few minutes because combined with the fact that the subtropical ridge, now that's below this map, but I'll just put an H where it is. We are going to be seeing this section of the United States get quite a bit of rainfall, plus more of these ridge riding thunderstorms, more of this northwest flow, keeping a big section of the country very, very wet in the coming days. Well, with that as our initial setup, let's see where we're going to go with this forecast, okay? Over the last 72 hours, due to that flow pattern, we have seen some extremely heavy rainfall across certain parts of the United States. We've had wide open Gulf of Mexico flow. We have also had an abundant amount of moisture that's sitting there uh, in the soil, in the lower atmosphere, and we've been able to extract it through some pretty big thunderstorms that have moved across the United States. Some locations here easily picking up between one and three inches of rainfall. A couple of pockets in through here, even heavier rainfall. And again, all sitting under that ridge that's been flowing like this, getting that wide open Gulf of Mexico moisture. All right. Now, in addition to some of the heavy rainfall that we've seen across parts of the United States, let me take those drawings off and just show you the last couple of days of severe weather reports. Going back to the 2nd here, July the 2nd, we, we saw right in through this quarter, uh, this eastern corn belt here, quite a bit of severe thunderstorm activity, a lot of severe winds with the squall lines moving through there. Remember, we've been talking about it. We can expect to see squall lines building into that moisture just like that. They build from the northwest to the southeast. And then just yesterday on July the 3rd, getting back into the, into the north central plains, a lot of reports of some pretty sizable hail across parts of north and south Dakota there. So we've had a very active 
active last few days, and none of this is really shutting down anytime soon. So first of all, happy 4th of July. Let's get into what our high temperatures are going to be today. You know, remember, due to that flow pattern, it's still doing this. We are going to be seeing across a big section of the United States some very warm temperatures, upper 80s, lower 90s. Still getting some of that extreme heat down here in the southeast, stretching into Florida there with a lot of upper uh, 90s. Uh, getting here into the uh, southern central plains, we're also seeing triple digit heat in places, but we'll be seeing temperatures climb way up into the 80s, pretty far into the Corn Belt. Where it's going to be slightly cooler than average, parts of the Pacific Northwest, parts of the northern plains, and believe it or not, these temperatures right through the Central Valley of California, which are going to be in the lower to mid 90s, is cooler than average. So with that as what our temperatures look like, I'll tell you, Mother Nature may be putting on a show of its own for us on the 4th of July because look at the moisture axis here. What I'm going to outline for you is the general region where we have what's called the 60 degree isodrosotherm. Isodrosotherm meaning line of constant dew point temperature. But this quarter and through here could be seeing dew point temperatures over 70. And that means the atmosphere is juiced up, which means it's going to continue to pop with a lot of thunderstorms. So throughout the day today, maybe this is a great website to be watching. Uh, Blitzertongue.org. I have advertised it a lot of times. It's one of my favorite websites. Uh, Already, Mother Nature, as I said up there in the upper left-hand corner, is celebrating early in parts of the North Central Plains, like South Dakota getting over toward Minnesota, parts of northwestern Iowa, also down there in Kansas. A lot of early morning thunder, uh, thunderstorms here at 3 a.m. So if you want to catch an early fireworks show, just go outside in those areas and you'll be able to watch it. But again, check this out throughout the day to see where we're going to have thunderstorms across the United States because you've seen that it is really juiced up in terms of moisture. And that is why the Storm Prediction Center has outlined such a large area in the United States, this whole region that could be seeing thunderstorms in the day today. Our main severe weather threat though is going to be stretching from parts of north central Wisconsin back here across this boundary that will be stretched here into parts of South Dakota uh, Nebraska getting there into the northeastern corner of Colorado and back into Wyoming. This also stretches down here into the high plains. So look out there. Also stronger thunderstorms expecting. You'll see that in a few minutes here over along the east coast. Once we get into the day uh, over here, this is on Friday, the map in the upper right hand corner. Again, we're watching this kind of north central plains, western corn belt for quite a bit of thunderstorm. But outside of that, still the risk of storms across much of the eastern two thirds of the United States. Same story again on Saturday, although we're going to be watching again Again, a quarter from Montana stretching through Wyoming, getting into Nebraska. So those are the regions the Storm Prediction Center is keeping a close eye on over the next three days, and you should too. So let's just kind of zoom in and look here at our high-resolution rapid refresh model. I'm going to start this off at 6 a.m. on Thursday morning, and we're going to play through the day on Thursday, getting into Friday. Now, what did you see there? You saw on that afternoon heat, watch it again, storms just popping uh, really across a broad section of the United States, pretty much the eastern half of the U.S. right there, popping with the afternoon heat. So that whole region expect to have pop-up showers and thunderstorms throughout the day. Where things are a bit more organized, just go back here into parts of Wyoming, getting into parts of South Dakota, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri. You see that moving through, starting late in the day on Thursday, moving the overnight hours, getting into Friday morning, we're going to watch this corridor right in through here for the potential for some strong storms to push through. You saw that with the Storm Prediction Center just a few moments ago. So this is what our high resolution rapid refresh model is suggesting. And it's a lot of thunderstorm activity across the country. That's why I wanted you to keep an eye on that blitzertongue.org website. Okay, this is just getting you through this Friday midday. Now, getting beyond this, let's take a look at just what our next week's worth of rainfall holds. We need to be talking about what's going on here in the Pacific Northwest because the flow pattern in Alaska, bringing them heat, might actually bring parts of the Pacific Northwest some rain in the coming days. And this could impact uh, late cutting, a uh, first cutting of hay, uh, but could also be impacting wheat harvest as well. Then we've been talking about this a lot. It's going to be this quarter right in through here over the next week that we're going to continue to see a lot of thunderstorm activity. There will be a slight break in there. You're going to see that as this higher atmospheric pressure pulls through. But overall, we're going to watch that quarter for a lot of storms. And then right in through here. We need to discuss what is happening right in here because it's a combination of events. There is that upper level low sitting and spinning here and a big ridge sitting off uh, way off the east coast here out in the open Atlantic. 
and it's going to help funnel moisture right along a boundary sitting in this area, which means a lot of showers and thunderstorms right there along the southeast coast coming up in the next several days. What about week two? Will we continue to see this same region staying wet? And also look at the north central plains. Look at the Great Lake states. Look at parts of the Corn Belt. The models are keeping that region wet as well. And due to the flow coming here off of the Pacific, we could be seeing parts of Washington state, especially this region, which has been drier, picking up some more precipitation. So that's a look at your week two uh, precipitation here on this map from the European model. Now, one of the big things that's been driving this is the fact that there's a feature called the North Atlantic Oscillation, and it has been in its negative phase since May. Now, we've been talking about it, but I haven't specifically just pointed it out to you as the NAO. We typically watch this more in late fall, all through winter and early spring, but this is what it is. Look over here on the map that's on the right. This is some high latitude blocking sitting in this area. In other words, that area just highlighted there, we just have seen a lot of higher atmospheric pressure since May 1st. And to the south of it, sitting just south of Greenland, there has been that upper level uh, trough feature. Now, that is the negative phase of the North Atlantic Oscillation. And it's been important, interestingly enough, for the heat in Europe. It's been important for the very active weather pattern we've had across the United States. And the question is, is it going to continue to stick around? So let's animate the upper levels first before I get into some of the details in the longer range forecast. Ready? Here is the current position of the trough that has been getting reinforced with time uh, there south of Greenland. We've also seen a lot of troughing in this area, and this is the big high going up into Alaska, setting some temperature records there and the low beneath it, and there is Barbara, okay? Now let me get those drawings off of there, and I want you to see where this pattern takes us in the coming days. So right here, I'm just gonna pause it by the time we get into Saturday. What we're going to notice beyond this is the troughing out west seems to hang around a little longer than I had originally forecast. And it's going to be there till the 8th, 9th, 10th. See it there? And that means ridging is going to stick around here over the Great Lakes for a few extra days. And this trough, which was a part of that negative NAO pattern, is still well reinforced. Look at our higher below here in Alaska. Now what this is all going to do is this is just going to push us out to the 10th, 11th, and 12th, keeping our ridge a little bit farther to the east than originally forecast, which means the warmth we're getting might hang on for a couple of more days before this broader ridge, watch this, presses back west with time. Okay? Now, even as I take you out here to the 14th, 15th, and 16th of the month, if you got to watch my longer range update, this is still a consistent picture overall. We see that we're in general have this troughing feature in through here, a ridge that's trying to build in the West United States and a broader trough in this area. But the only changes that we've got out of this pattern is that even though we still have the Northwest flow, so yep, thunderstorms through parts of the Corn Belt, heat building out West, heat building across the South, this did moderate temperatures some, meaning bringing them a little bit warmer across parts of the Corn Belt. Still, it uh, uh, looks to be as a cooler bias as we progress through the end of, of July, but there's some moderation we've just seen in some recent model runs. Now, one model run doesn't change everything, but it's at least the latest data that we've got, and I want to make sure that I mention it for you. So what does this mean in terms of precipitation? So remember, we're going to be watching this corridor in through here. We're going to watch this region right in through here. So watching low pressure systems spin up here, high pressure off the coast, bringing a lot of moisture here to the southeast. And you're going to see multiple paths of storms moving across this area. So that's what we're going to watch as we just take a look at the European model over the next 10 days. There will be a break in this, though. OK, let me just step you back here. Look, this is getting off Thursday afternoon. This is the evening of the 4th of July. Everywhere where you see green in here, these are all potential regions of thunderstorms. OK, that's the European model picking up on that thunderstorm pattern. Now watch as we get into Friday morning again under the heat and humidity. Friday morning to Friday afternoon, we're watching this corridor. Now, you're going to start to see higher atmospheric pressure moving in to the north central plains, going over toward the Great Lakes states, and then over to the northeast as I progress through the weekend. You ready? Here it comes. Now, still some storms there. Look at this. This is now Friday night, getting into Saturday morning across the Corn Belt. But see the high pressure building in there? That's going to cool things off, dry some folks out in the north central plains. And as that pushes, see it there? It's just pushing you right across the Great Lakes states over to the northeast. All along its southern periphery and through here, more showers and thunderstorms. See it all there? 
And as that progresses on off to the north and east, behind it, an active pattern reemerges here by the time we get into Monday and Tuesday, bringing more storms right back into that same corridor, which has been seeing a lot of storms recently. So that just continues to stay active. Now, I've got you out about a week from now. This is next Thursday morning. And at this particular time, you can still see the influence. It's off the page, but there's higher pressure here. And it's starting to push quite a bit of moisture into the southeast. Well, continuing to push quite a bit of moisture into the southeast. And the latest European model room wants to bring in, look at this right down here. See, multiple rounds coming through the plains, but look right down here. It's trying to bring in, now this is pretty far out, looks like a little low pressure system that could sneak in here. Now it's got tropical nature to it, but it's not a tropical system yet at this point. And I looked at all the ensemble members and other models, and I'll just tell you, it's not exactly showing up in great detail in all those other models, but it is something to be on the lookout for here. Because it is July, and we need to be keeping an eye on the tropics, okay? Talk to you more about that in a second. What does that same flow pattern do in terms of our temperatures? Well, through the next five days, that's what you get over here on the left. We're still going to be seeing warmth as the pattern is still doing something like this, remember? So a lot of above average temperatures in through here and still cool along the West Coast. What about days 5 through 10? We can see that still the pattern is still flattening out like this and still hanging on to that warmer bias a little bit longer than we originally had forecast. But by the time you get out to the day 15, so this is day 10 through 15, at this point, remember, we've now got our high here, low there, and the flow pattern is doing a bit more like this. And as it does that, warmth along the West Coast, warmth in the Southern Plains, but this is where the cooler pattern begins to return by the time we get to mid-month. Again, it's moderated somewhat, but not too much, okay? So that is what our temperatures are doing. Let's now come back and talk about the tropics briefly. We do know that the hurricane center is right now not calling for anything over the next five days. But remember, what I showed you was out here in the week two time frame. So look at the bottom right hand map. By that particular point, uh, our upper level, uh, you know, our upper level support for tropical thunderstorms to develop does move over parts of the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico. So it looks like once we get past the middle of July toward the end of July, we're going to have to watch the tropics very carefully. That's something I addressed quite a bit in my long range update that came out yesterday. But in the meantime, much of the tropical activity is going to be centered here uh, in the eastern Pacific, uh, where we currently have Barbara. In fact, I just want to show you the latest on Barbara. Barbara, of course, is right here. And just so that you know, the uh, National Hurricane Center is watching this cluster of thunderstorms behind it to potentially become our next system that's going to be in the East Pacific. But again, these are out here in the East Pacific. They're pretty far away from Hawaii, and they're not right now taking the trajectory like this, where they come back into the United States. Nope, they're going to stay out here in open open ocean. So that's what's going on in the specific. To finish this up, I want to give you a quick overview of a couple of regions around the globe that I'm watching carefully. I'm going to take you on the left here to looking at the next week's worth of rainfall from the European model um, over here in Europe. Now, uh, one thing is certain, the extreme heat that we had been seeing has subsided. It's still going to be in parts of southern Europe getting over toward France. You're still going to see some warmer days coming up, but nothing like we saw in the last couple of weeks. And that's primarily because of a broader trough feature sitting in this area. And we're going to be watching starting early next week, moving through middle of next week for some heavy rains right in through this area. Now, that's significant because this is the Black Sea and this is Ukraine right in through here. So bringing in that rain into parts of Ukraine is very important and also some heavier rains forecast to move through parts of the Russian wheat belt. Meanwhile, let me take you here over to uh, 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 parts of Asia. The monsoon is now finally going. You can see that over the next week, some of, of, uh, of, of parts of India may be getting well over a foot of rainfall. This is very typical of the monsoon. But in the southeast China, the Mayu front, which is also, that's right in through there, which is also a, a, a monsoonal feature, possibly bringing in a lot of heavy rain to that corridor as well. But remember, when we're thinking about China, this is the major ag productive area. Area. That's the north and, and eastern part of uh, north and east of Beijing. And then down here, just south and east of it, is also pretty uh, um, big on ag. You can see the southern growing regions in um, that corridor of China, not nearly as wet as the northern. So those are a couple of important things that we're going to have to watch throughout the growing season uh, for the rest of the northern hemisphere here. So with that uh, kind of quick global update here, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the forecast video right there. Hope you all have a very safe and happy 4th of July. And we at Nutrient Ag Solutions, thank you for your attention. Hope you look forward to all of our weather content that comes out at my.nutrientagsolutions.com. 
Thank you.